And sitting on my left is Professor Huang Wan Yu, teaching international economics at Gangneung Wanju National University. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the program, nice to Professor meet you. Huang. Well, let's talk about the forum itself. Mm -hmm. um, uh, this is the fourth high-level forum mm -hmm. on effectiveness of aid. Um, mm -hmm. So what kind of forum or meeting is this? Well, global community of 7 billion population has various tasks for its sustainability and prosperity. Among those tasks, poverty reduction might be the top on the list. The, the high-level forum is considered as the highest level international conference on that agenda which is poverty reduction and ID effectiveness. Busan Forum is the fourth one following Rome in 2003, Paris in 2005, and Accra in 2008. About 3,000 people representing 160 countries and 70 international organizations and CEOs and intellectuals from the global communities joined Busan Forum. The meeting aims to explore ways for more effective aid to realize poverty reduction in the global community. I see. So uh, ODA mm -hmm. is the theme of mm -hmm. the forum. Um, but uh, some of our audience may not be very familiar with mm -hmm. what ODA is for mm -hmm. the official uh, uh, development assistance. Mm -hmm. So could you explain a little bit? Yes, uh, ODA is a kind of uh, normally referred to as aid or sometimes granting aid which helps mm -hmm. developing countries to boost the economy and to, to get out of uh, poverty. So together with uh, private development assistance, so-called PDA, it is a main financial flow to developing countries from developed countries. I see. So um, this time the forum, a very large scale mm -hmm. international meeting was held in Busan, mm -hmm. not in Seoul, yeah. which is the usual venue mm -hmm. of such mm -hmm. a large scale mm -hmm. international mm -hmm. forum. So what's the significance of having such a meeting in Busan? Well, in two respects, it is very special. Korea is one of the only, I mean, Korea is the only country which transforms itself from aid recipient to donors in half century, which means that Korea can take a role of bridge between donors group and recipients. And the experiences of Korea, life experience of Korea, which is very useful for developing countries. In particular, Busan is especially meaningful. Until 1960s, Busan was a shabby seaport discharging food and aid materials. This city becomes the fifth largest seaport of the world, loading high-tech products and aid materials for abroad. Many participants of the forum have chances to observe the remarkable transition of Korea, which is with their own eyes in Busan. Uh, that's, personally, that's <laughs> my hometown. I see. And the people are pretty much impressed with the development of Busan because Normally, in most capital cities in the world, they have skyscrapers, but not very much in the secondary city. But the participants of the forum was really, really surprised with higher buildings, to some extent higher than Seoul, and then best facilities offered for the, for the important ish, the, the, the forum, and let alone the beautiful scenic uh, beach of Haeundae. So, uh, in a way, Busan has witnessed the total transformation of Korea's status. Yes. So maybe that's another meaningful part of it. Um, this is the fourth forum of such kind, and we know that there have been three, as mm -hmm. uh, Dr. John just explained. Uh, in three previous forums, uh, so what were the achievements in the pre three previous forums? Uh, we have to, to, to make a better understanding of this event we have to get an idea how it, the forum was organized because all started from the declaration of Millennium Development Goals in 2000. And in 2002, uh, the World Summit gathered to, to wait, find a way to finance development in Monterey in Mexico. Then the first meeting for aid effectiveness was held in Rome. The first meeting focused more on aid harmonization then second meeting in Paris in 2005, they added on four more subjects, making Paris Declaration, 
And then they, had, they specified the so-called action agenda in Accra in 2008. And that background, and then together with some very important meetings for fragile states, which was held in Delhi in East Timor, and then least developed countries held in uh, the Istanbul, Turkey, all those spirits and movement was focused on uh, uh, the finalization of the uh, promises and declaration in, in Busan. I see. And I understand that the fourth meeting is uh, last of such kind before the target year of mm -hmm. 2015. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's really... To the, some the, extent, the, yes. To some extent, um, yeah. Because uh, this is the finalization meeting of mm -hmm. discussions on aid effectiveness. But at the same time, this is the beginning or the, the starting window to, to extend our discussions on development effectiveness or the global partnership to upgrade the discussions in international cooperation. I see. Uh, so uh, that's uh, sort of the, the significance of the fourth meeting, mm -hmm. and uh, that's why they have uh, emphasized mm -hmm. uh, the, the taking one step further or one step forward uh, in this regard. And it is reported that a totally new paradigm was uh, suggested at uh, the Busan Forum. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. Uh, the Busan Forum was held in a rich country between donor groups and recipients. So far, aid was a supplier's market. Uh, traditional donors unilaterally provide aid, and recipient countries simply receive it. Uh, Busan Forum takes a step toward develop developing countries for aid effectiveness and play the role of platform for developing countries to present their strong voices for aid effectiveness. I think that Busan Forum provides a momentum for aid effectiveness, gearing ODA to a way of telling how to catch fish rather than simply keeping fish. Mm -hmm. To add up some uh, viewpoint on uh, Dr. Mm -hmm. Chan's uh, remarks, uh, Busan Forum is very important because we could uh, invite uh, the private communities, private entrepreneurial mm -hmm. communities, because uh, in Accra in 2008, for the first time CSOs or civil society organizations mm -hmm. were included. And this time we actually opened and invited uh, businessmen to take part in our joint efforts in development cooperation. And another very significant movement was including so-called emerging donors, such as China, Brazil, Russia, Turkey. Mm -hmm. Those players are doing very, very important role nowadays. So mm -hmm. this is a kind of very comprehensive, comprehensive get-together in development uh, community. I see. So in a way, it's sort of a expanding as the, the group of donors, uh, including those private yes, donors, that is to and say, the so -called, newcomers yes, to the donor countries. Yes, stakeholders countries. I see. I see. Mm -hmm. So participation by those uh, you know, newcomers would definitely change the, the landscape of ODA programs of in, in mm -hmm. the world. That was the focal point of I discussions, see. actually. Uh, President Lee myung mm. Bak also mm. attended the opening ceremony, yes. and he uh, reportedly uh, spent uh, quite an extended time mm. over there, mm -hmm. and he addressed the opening ceremony, yes. and he emphasized mm. uh, the importance mm -hmm. of ODA. Mm. So could you tell us a little yes. bit more about Yes, that? representing the host country, which transformed itself from aid recipient to aid donors. President Lee myung Bak gave a meaningful message to international community. He underscored that the less well-off countries are not a burden on global community. Rather, they are key partners for sustainable growth of the global community. Uh, reconfirming Korea's ODA uh, increased policies, he uh, pledged that Korea will remain a true partner to developing countries and sharing our experience of success and failure. See, so he uh, delivered a definite sure. message that Korea sure. will be a mm. very active player right. in this field. Mm. Um, 
uh, not only uh, with the presence of mm -hmm. you know some political leaders and um, you know other dignitaries, there have been some unexpected or uh, those uh, dignitaries with whom we haven't seen in Korea. So that was reported in the mass media in Korea. So could you tell us about the participation by yes, uh, other uh, this global is a really figures? Mm -hmm, global conference attended by several key uh, the head of states not only from uh, developed countries, but also from developing countries. Uh, one of uh, the participants was the president of Rwanda, Paul Kagame, who is also a special advisor on MDGs at the UN, mm -hmm. participated and delivered his view uh, from the perspective of developing or recipient countries of aid. And also Her Ma uh, Majesty Queen Yordan uh, Laza uh, participated and then she emphasized again and again, and again about the role of education and uh, the importance of gender issues. Mm -hmm. And then another celebrity, uh, the U.S. Uh, the, the Secretary of Department, uh, mm -hmm. Hillary Clinton, uh, attended. And not only those figures, but also many head of international organizations attended. I see. So uh, I understand that um, the Secretary of State, uh, Ms. Clinton, also emphasized uh, the, the role of women mm -hmm. and uh, promoting women's competence mm -hmm. in, in development. I, I think in particular she underscored that developing countries need to be more selective in receiving aid from donors. S seemingly targeting China's mm -hmm. aid is interesting. And also uh, UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon uh, called on international community not to decrease ODA in spite of economic stagnation and tight fiscal management. I see. So, and I understand that there have been some political statements mm -hmm. uh, delivered mm -hmm. uh, during the forum. Yes. Could you tell mm -hmm. us a bit more about it? Well, uh, reflecting more diversified supplies of uh, development assistance and in recognition of the need for aid effectiveness. The policy statement presents four shared principles which are ownership of development priorities by developing countries to more focusing on results. Three, more inclusive development partnership including South-South cooperations and fourth, transparency and accountability to each other. I think that we are geared to the right direction for effective aid and emerging donors, recipient countries, as well as uh, traditional donors are fully support the Busan declarations. Um, could you tell us a little yes, bit about uh, the declaration? The, the last uh, Busan declaration, so officially called the final outcome documents of Busan conference, was released uh, last day in the morning. And it contains uh, all uh, different stakeholders' opinions. And then that was not made overnight, actually. Uh, there was a uh, year-long discussions and then several round meetings to draft uh, first version, second version, and up until the fifth and the final version was made. And then the, the outcome documents contains very important uh, points, which is different from others. The first one is inclusion, inclusive development partnership. That means uh, inviting emerging donors and as well as <laughs> developing countries, also private sectors to get, in, get involved in decision making of international development cooperation. And then second one, they really em emphatically emphasized the, the role of private sectors in development cooperation. And then they set up a very uh, detailed specified date to continue our discussions. In June uh, to 2012, they will draft a, a kind of action plan that we can extend our discussions toward global partners for international development. Not only those ones, they also emphasize gender issues, also mm -hmm. the, the, the other uh, the new uh, partnership issues were raised in, the, in their final, final discussions. I see. So it sort of put out a very vigorous blueprint for the coming years, I guess, in the mm -hmm. field of ODA. 
Um, but I, I also uh, understand that there is a growing concern mm -hmm. uh, that uh, the current financial crisis mm -hmm. in the world, especially in the areas of North America mm -hmm. and some European countries, yes. may result in the decrease mm -hmm. in the amount of ODA. Uh, well, current economic stagnations <coughs> might negatively affect on the volume of ODA. Historically, ODA trend shows up and down trend. However, this does not mean that the international community commit less on poverty reduction of the global community. First, international community disregarding the volume of ODA will strengthen its effort for more effective and quality aid. Second, uh, emerging donors like BRICS will take more responsibility in developing corporations. Thirdly, CSOs and investment by corporations is expected to make uh, more contributions to the development of developing countries. I think that ODA will be provided in a more diversified and coordinated manner for aid effectiveness. So maybe that's why they call um, ODA is not mm -hmm. uh, from north to south anymore. Yeah, it sure. could be mm -hmm. south to south, mm -hmm. and that might definitely change the paradigm of right. ODA in mm -hmm. the coming years. But Professor Park, there exists a kind of different opinion mm -hmm. or perspective. Mm -hmm. I see. Uh, because uh, OECD itself actually predicted a quite substantial reduction of ODA flow mm -hmm. in coming years. Actually, they predicted 1% increase by annum since mm -hmm. 2010 up until 2013. Uh, uh, it is quite contrast uh, uh, if we compare to the previous record because previous three years ODA from developed countries and developed countries increased by 12 percent per annum. So you see very great contrast and then very great reduction. That is why developed countries actually emphasized the and then they invited private sectors to, to contribute something to the international community. And that is uh, the point many CSO actually, or at least the developed countries actually worried very much about it because even though we emphasize the important role of private sectors, there should be a gap up until we wait for their active involvement in, in ODA activities. So it is very, in that sense, it is very uh, negative uh, sense we shared among CSO leaders uh, on the scene. I see. Um, I, I would, uh, was told that among the participants there were representatives from uh, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So would they work with the, the state parties uh, in ODA programs or will they participate as independent donors? Uh, Bill and Gates uh, that's the most representative uh, CSO right. uh, foundation. Mm -hmm. uh, they are holding actually very great amount of money, but they act uh, independently. So far, they acted. They have acted independently and emphasized most on uh, health issues. But the importance of those private uh, philanthropic fund is growing very rapidly. Mm -hmm. And then, if you remember what happened in. G20 in Ghana last month, uh, it was Bill Gates who actually uh, raised the issue of and the importance of development cooperation, not by the state has. So, so in that sense, uh, philanthropic activists will play a very, very active and great role uh, in the future. Yeah. Well, then, following on that, Professor Huang, do you think uh, those CSOs uh, could be a bit uh, freer from political concerns when they give this kind of assistance? Or, well, in, an, of, of course, that's, so that's they are freer their, from the political yes, by nature. Mm -hmm. By nature, mm -hmm. by definition, but CSO be... is an independent body, acts right. from uh, different from uh, the ODA uh, GOs. But uh, this was a very uh, important meeting because uh, they were invited in discussions of global issues. And then to some extent, they, they were very happy. Actually, the global leaders of CSO Forum actually represented very, very good appreciation to the organizers. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, we, so, we call them as one part of global partners. Mm -hmm. So they play a very important role. And then we have to share 
information and share ideas how we can maximize the benefits of aid to developing countries. Uh, right, especially in the growing concern over the possible reduction of ODA from nation states, it might be very helpful to include them as uh, part of the donors. Well, it seems uh, very obvious that ODA would play a very important role mm -hmm. in narrowing the gap mm -hmm. between the more affluent countries and mm -hmm. uh, countries that need help mm -hmm. at the moment. Um, to further invigorate mm -hmm. such great program, so what should we do? Well, I think for that purpose, donors and recipients need to renew their attitude toward and recognition of ODA. Donors are asked to concentrate their efforts uh, for development cooperation uh, on providing knowledge of how to catch fish rather than giving fish. And recipient countries are requested to have recognition that there's no free lunch and try, try to graduate from dependence on aid as soon as possible. I see. Mm. Well, in a way of concluding remark, uh, Professor Huang, mm -hmm. what should we do to further develop this such a great program? Uh, there are two uh, different perspectives. If I mention the first global perspective, first of all, we should make great efforts in increasing the amount of ODA to developing countries because uh, DAC, Development Assistance Committee of the OECD, including Korea, actually have pledged to increase the level of ODA up until 0.7% of GNI, gross national income. But so far, the pledge has not been met, uh, the, the just hovering around 0.3% or so. So we have a long gap so to be filled in, in, in coming years. And for Korea, we just started ODA operation uh, while becoming the the DAC membership in last year. But the problem is we are trying uh, to raise our amount and we price it and then it was uh, at the, they applauded very much at, at the conference. But in terms of quality of ODA, we have a lot of things actually to be improved. Uh, according to a, an assessment by uh, a, an independent body in Washington DC, Korean ODA was ranked the last among 24 uh, DAC countries. So there are not only quantity, but also we have to raise our quality. And in that sense, uh, we have very uh, uh, different type of singular structure, or so-called ODA architecture at home. Uh, we have two major players like Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade, Ministry of Finance and Planning, and then on top, we, we have built an umbrella organization called National Committee for International Development Cooperation, mm -hmm. chaired by the Prime Minister. But that ODA structure doesn't work very well in Korea. That is uh, the most pending and then uh, issue that we have to repair in Korea. Probably we will have to learn by doing, and we are definitely one of the newcomers, but vigorous newcomer, mm -hmm. I of guess, mm -hmm. uh, in this field. I'm afraid that's all the time we have for today. And once again, I'd like to thank both of you, Dr. John and Professor Huang, for being here and sharing your insights. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.